this is Tony Green, and this is Create a Life You Love. And what a what a perfect way to start the show today. Um, so I scheduled this, and like five minutes before it was supposed to start, uh, my computer did an automatic update, which what a weird time of day for my computer to just do an automatic update. So here's where we're going to go. Perfect timing. We're going to start Create a Life You Love with the idea of everything happens in perfect timing and mm, in a perfect way. So delays and distractions can actually be favorable for whatever reason. Sometimes we never know why, but we just figure it is. So I'm going to get comfortable here now that we're getting going and we are going to get started. So one of, I have my little list of things I'd like to cover today. So the law of attraction um, and create a life you love airs on WSCS and YouTube live streaming. If you want to watch live, please um, go to YouTube, look up Tony Green Psychic Medium and subscribe. And then whenever I put a show out, you'll be notified and you can watch it. I try to pre-schedule my shows. It doesn't always happen that way. Every Monday at noon, I do Psychic Medium Tony Green and um, I do that for 30 minutes. This show will be 30, approximately 30 minutes also. So let's talk a little bit about divine timing, perfect timing, everything happening as it should and not as we want, which this is not at all the direction I was going to take my show today. I have all these um, notes and apparently they want me to go in this direction with you. So in life, patience is probably the most difficult thing for us to have, okay? It it really is. When there's something we think it should be here, we, we feel this should be it, we feel we should meet this goal at this time, one of the most difficult things is to convince ourselves that there's a timing to everything, and perhaps this isn't the perfect timing for this particular thing, because we already have it in our head that this is where we're supposed to be. Now I'm going to tell you right now, what's in our head is the number one thing, the only thing stopping us from the life that we want. And when I say what's in our head, I mean, our preconceived notions, our programs, our beliefs, our um, stubbornness, anything that is not going with the flow is in the way of us going with the flow to get to where we want to be, what we want to have, and the life that we want to live. And if we can relax and take that attitude of this is all happening in perfect timing, whew, right? Take that breath and know that a distraction might be the law of attraction in action. I like, kind of like that. Thank you, guys. Something that is um, stopping us or slowing us down or causing a pause might be something that's actually working out to our advantage. I'm going to give you a couple of different examples on this. So the first example is in a relationship. Um, I'm going to use work and relationship. I'm going to go back and forth for the examples on this, okay? In a relationship, you might be in a relationship with someone that you feel, this is it, this is the person, let's go get it done. Um, because you feel that way, okay? Because you might have this, what you think is a knowing or a belief or whatever that th this is the person, okay? But um, all of a sudden, something happens, there's a hiccup, there's an argument, there's a fight, there's a separation. So the way I look at this is um, 
the universe, uh, God, whatever you call God, um, angels are coming in and giving you a moment to reevaluate everything, to look at everything again and say a couple of things. It doesn't mean it's not going to work out. Maybe it's not. Maybe it was never meant to, to work out. Um, but to slow down and look at it and say, is this what you really want? Is this really, really what you want? Think about this long term. Is this really what you want? Is this the way you want to live your life? Are you really as happy as you think you are? Or did you jump on an ideal and you're trying to run with it now? And we're going to do a whole series, a whole law of attraction, um, create a life you love, law of attraction series on relationships and a series on love. And they are two completely different things. Trust me. In a career, when you want a promotion or you want to be the lead of a project, sometimes the universe will step in and say, not quite yet. Even though we know you really want this, we're going to back it up a little bit. And we are going to let you uh, take a breath. Because if you get this right now, the timing won't work out. Maybe there's somebody uh, higher up that would have gotten in the way or the project was just doomed to fail in the first place, whatever it is. So whenever there is a distraction, a delay, wh whatever it is, even, even in, okay, even when you're driving and you get stalled by traffic, it, it, and you know you have a deadline, you have some place to be. But all of a sudden, there's there's a delay. Sometimes that's that even that is for you. that's that's to prevent you maybe from getting into an accident or doing this or doing that or or whatever it may be. We just have to have that faith, that knowing that everything is in divine timing. Everything is happening as it is supposed to, in the timing it's supposed to happen in, okay? Just because you don't get something right now, it doesn't mean you're not going to get it. How you handle the delay or the distraction is extremely important. If you can handle it with grace, which is very difficult sometimes because we are very impatient, but if you can handle it with grace and kind of, um, this is so hard for me, release the need to have your outcome on your terms, mm -hmm. which a lot of people wouldn't even admit that's what they want, but it. It is. Everybody wants a, a particular outcome. We're, we are all, we're taught very early on to work toward a particular goal and to have timelines and to fixate on them. But if we can release that, especially when there are other people involved, because we cannot control other people. We can only control ourselves. And if you think you're in control of yourselves, try to stop breathing. Try not to go to the bathroom when you have to go to the bathroom. That's exactly how much control you have over yourself. Seriously, think about it. Our body happens automatically. And if we think we're in control of things, just see how long you can go without going to the bathroom. Right. OK, that's exactly how much control we have over anything. And we don't want to admit that. So we try to have control over all these other things that we really have no control over. But it makes us feel good to think we do. I don't know. I think that's the number one cause of anxiety is trying to control everything and trying to control the outcome of things and then everything doesn't go on that timeline and then ah, we're all anxious. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Let's get back on track here. Um, being in that space where we can let go of the idea of the timeline and know that everything is happening for us 
as it is supposed to. Okay. And, and along with that, one of the things I really, I think I brought it up in the last episode last week, but I'm going to bring it up again in this episode is, um, there's an, uh, there's a statement that's really powerful and a lot of people will never, ever use this statement, but it's, it's one of the most powerful statements you could ever use. I was wrong. And, and if you add sorry, whether you're talking to yourself or another person, this is one of the most powerful statements you can use. I'm sorry, I was wrong. And we are all wrong at one point or another. But when we concede like that, when we say, oh, you know what, I was wrong. What we're really doing is opening the door for other opportunities to come in. Okay, so let's say you're again, relationship, career, relationship, career. If you're in a relationship and you believed this was the person or you believed something happened that didn't. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Um, Even just to yourself, let's just say you believe this is the person that was going to be your forever person. And then and then things go wrong. And then you have to let go of the situation. One of the most powerful things that you can say to yourself is, oh, I was wrong. That allows you to move on. Holding on to, but I thought this was the one. Oh my God, I thought we were gonna like have this life. Well, apparently not. If that was what was meant to be, it would have been. And if you want, oh my God, this is, there's so much I can say about this, but if you want this life and you're with this person, but sometimes you just have to make the choice because maybe this person can never give you this life. And if you're fixated on the life, like we're going to have this life where we travel the world or we, we create this together or we do that together. Or how about just this? How about just, how about just this? He's going to be, you know, I I met this guy and he's amazing. And I, 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 this is how I, I, this is the potential I see in him. And you really want that potential that you see in this person right? You, you think this person can be romantic and kind and loving and um, eventually give you the commitment or eventually do this or eventually do that. And you keep asking for these things. Well, the universe is going to go, okay, you really want these things. So we're going to clean the table, take this person out, and we're going to bring in somebody that that can give you the life the dream isn't dead just the the dream is still alive the dream is there it just has to happen with somebody who's capable of fulfilling that dream so it's really important to acknowledge you know what i was wrong this this isn't the person of my dreams this isn't my um person that I'm going to do my ever after with. Even if you've been with this person for 10, 20 years, it's okay to say, I was wrong. It's time for me to move on. Now, career-wise, the same thing. You might start with a company and everything's great, or you might start, uh, uh, want this promotion and get the promotion and then be like, oh my God, there's so much more work to this than I ever thought. I was wrong about this. Um, Saying I was wrong allows solutions to come in, allows for you to open so many other doors that can take you to that next place, that can take you to that next level. It doesn't, and and believe me, I was wrong doesn't mean, it doesn't always mean giving up what you have. Sometimes it means it opens the door to solutions to what's going on. Okay, so it's really important to be able to at least think those words to yourself. Oh, I was wrong about this situation. Because as soon as you can say those words, you're back in the flow. You're not fighting that energetic flow. You're not you're not holding on to this outcome. 
right? You're not holding on to this outcome anymore, any longer. And you're able to go for like a hundred different outcomes. Seriously. And that is really, you have no idea how empowering that is for you to be able to have options and to have all these other possible outcomes come to you to, to work with you. Okay. And let's talk about that energetic flow. Either we're going with what our life is supposed to be, or we're going against the grain of what our life is supposed to be. If we're working with what our life is supposed to be, going in that order, we are being creative. Ideas are coming to us. Outcomes are coming to us. Answers are coming to us because we're in that energetic flow. The moment, again, we try to take that, uh, it has to be this way and only this way. This is the only solution. In a world of millions upon millions upon literally millions of solutions and options to be fixated on one outcome is probably the most devastating thing you can do to your life. Be open to all of the options. Now, this doesn't mean, you know, leave the person that you're with. This doesn't mean, um, you have to start, you know, changing things that are working for you. That's not at all what this means. Where we're going with this is we're open. We're on this path, doing, 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 doing. And we're open to any other options that come in as far as uh, moving us further down our path in a, a beautiful, brilliant um way without without going against the flow or as they used to say um against the grain we don't want to go against the grain we want to go with with it we want to flow with the energy and when we're flowing with the energy it brings up our frequency our energy and it helps us to be in that space where we're more powerful and more creative creative ideas come into us and our intuition can take off, okay? Those little hits and insights can come in and just take off for us. And that's that's the really powerful place to be. That's the place where everything starts to unfold. So some people, let's just say career-wise, you have a, um, a, a, let's just call it a nine to five. And it's a good nine to five, right? But you're in the flow and all of a sudden you're getting ideas for products that you could take to marketplace or for businesses that you could open. It doesn't mean drop everything you have now and jump here. I mean, if you financially, if you can, awesome. Sometimes that road can be a little bit longer than you think. So really plan that out. Look at everything realistically, but keep the fantasy alive, which a lot of people misunderstand okay the the reality is that you can have you can be working on this life that will take you to the life that you consider your fantasy life and at the same time uh be very realistic about some of the outcomes for that life not everything is going to move as quickly as you want it to i mean if you stay in the flow it probably will but you have to plan for those just in cases, those distractions, those things that might take us off of course for just that hot minute, right? So now having said that, one of the most important things that I can say about being in the flow is the better it gets, the better it gets. And I can't, a lot of people who work with the law of attraction will tell you this. Once you're at a certain energetic level, you can 100% stay in that level no matter what happens and keep um, going up. And the stronger you are on that level, the stronger you are um, energetically, 
like sometimes I say, um, how would I say this? I would say it, um, if you feel weak or you feel strong in the morning, we'll tell you where your frequency or your energetic level is. You always want to feel strong. You always want to be strong. And, you know, one way to judge where you are energetically and, and energy is everything. I can't I cannot stress this enough. We are all energetic beings. OK, if you can get out of bed and make a, a solid decision and follow through on that solid decision and feel good about it, energetically, you're probably in a pretty good place. OK, and yes, things happen for everybody every day that will bring their energy down a little bit. Maybe you have a cranky ass, a cranky asking. That's what I was going to say, boss. <laughs> it's possible. Or maybe you get some sad news or whatever, or, you know, your partner is at a much lower frequency than you are and starts stuff throughout the day. You can disown that. Mm -hmm. You can disown it. You don't have to own anything somebody else says or does. You can acknowledge it if you have to, but you walk away from it just like a just like a squirrel on the street. You're not going to try to pick it up and bring it home no matter what it's doing. You're just going to let it be on the street, right? You're just going to walk right by. Hi, squirrel. Bye, squirrel. I'm moving on, okay? It's kind of the same thing. If somebody says or does something that isn't in alignment with your energy, just like a squirrel on the street, you just walk right by it. Okay, gotcha. Bye. You don't own it, though. You're going to let it go. Um, so in order to be raising your frequency, being strong in that energy, being so strong in your energy and in your belief system, mm -hmm, you have to just every day be in that space. And, you know, people will say, you need to meditate. No. Mm -mm. You don't. You don't need to meditate. Mm -mm. You need to do this. You need to. Do no, no. You you want to know what it is? It's all in your head. It is the thoughts that you carry about yourself. And it is the thoughts that you carry about the world around you. It is your belief system. Literally. Am I loved? Am I cared for? Do others love me? Do I love others? That's a huge belief system. The more that you love yourself, the more you are in that space of love. And I can't stress this enough. The stronger your energy is, the more you understand things and the different level you understand them on. So I will explain this. I'll try to explain this in another way. When you are very strong in your energy and you see other people, when you're in victim mode and injured mode, you see the victim in other people. And then you kind of, for lack of a better term, glob on to that. And that's the, the level you're working from, okay? When you're angry or entitled, you see angry, entitled people and you glob onto that, right? Because our energy is a magnet for energy just like us. So if you want to know where you are, look around at the people that, that surround you, that you spend your time with. If they're happy, if they're good, if they're solid, if they're creating, if they're wealthy, you're right there with them. If they're down and out, angry, entitled, cheating, lying, stealing, scheming, you might want to look at your energy. And if you don't match that, you might want to get out of that cycle. OK, uh, OK. So if you're in, if you're running into people who are very angry or very 
entitled or whatever emotion it is, and you're globbing on and connecting with them and having conversations about that, that's where your energy is. Now, if you're in that state of unconditional love for self, and I'm going to do a little clearing right now so that we can start to get to that place, then you can look at things from that perspective of love and love says, <laughs> it's so hokey. It's just <laughs> the way they're channeling this to me. It's just the, like the song, let it be. <laughs> Hi, babe. Oh my goodness. Let it be. You could, when you're in that state of love, you have so much coming in for yourself. So many, so money will start to come in. Money ideas will start to come in. Creative projects will start to come in or work and pay raises will start to come in. Um, new love partners will come in. And trust me, the higher your frequency, the more partners that want to be with you. Not all of them are on your frequency. Some people just see your frequency and they're like, you're amazing. I, I want to be with you. Um, but those who are on your frequency, you'll feel it right away. That's that energetic connection. You two are on the same frequency. Now, if you are in that state of love and unconditionally love yourself, you're not going to fall in for the trap of victim or anger. You'll see it. You'll understand it. But you won't partake in it. And in that moment, you will understand how energy works. So my my every week I try to give one thing. So I deserve better was the first week. This week is, I want to say, just get comfortable with, you know what? I was wrong. I was wrong. And then the second thing is just every morning when you wake up and every night when you go to sleep, I love myself. And a lot of people feel uncomfortable even thinking that, let alone saying it. And isn't that what we would want to teach every child to say is that they love themselves? We would never want children like I don't have children, but I would never want my nieces or nephews to not love themselves. Like I cannot tell them I love them enough. And I want them to know that that's just a fact and that's how they're supposed to feel about themselves. OK, but when it comes to us saying it for us. There's a discomfort with it. And if we feel it genuinely, we start to think it's egoic. But the truth of the matter is self-love brings other love. And that's when your frequency gets stronger and you can move up in those levels. I love myself. Okay, that's the show for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Please. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below. I'll be happy to answer them. Until the next show, please take care. And remember, it is your job to make miracles in your life.